Hey boss. Ah uh, yeah, so Comic Con's tomorrow, so they just need us to send through the new MCU Phase 17 presentation. I've got nothing. Nothing? What do you mean, nothing? I've got no ideas. An empty slate of zero content. How could this happen? We have run out of our most iconic characters. We've either killed them off or the actors have moved on. What, there's nothing we can do? We've been so successful up until this point. We have made 151 movies and TV shows. I've got nothing left to give. I think this might be it. We're done. Okay. I was hoping it wouldn't have to get to this, but... Follow me. What's in here? In here, we have all of the forgotten superheroes that we have the rights to. We just lock them away and never use them because they're kind of... You know, bad. We've no other choice. It's the only way. Alright then, let me introduce you to Phase 17 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and just all of the movies and TV shows we have lined up. Alright then, in March of 2040 we have Shamrock, an Irish superhero with good luck powers and that's coming to Disney Plus very soon. Alright then, one of our new movies Prime will focus on Kevin Green, a 13-year-old boy who can transform into a big, muscly superhero. Hang on, isn't that just ripping off Shazam? <laughs> Shut up. Next we have The Fourth Musketeer, the story of a ghost who rises from the dead when Nazi Germany invades France. What is happening? Oh, you're gonna love this one. Rocket Racer. I reckon this will be the new face of the MCU. Okay, we're done. G'day guys, how are we all doing today? So, I think it's safe to say that Phase 4 of the MCU hasn't exactly been... as well received as it should have. Everything that they've released this phase has been... criticised in some way or another. And that's putting it politely. I've seen the backlash. I've seen the hate comments. And you know what? I'm not gonna lie. I actually really like Phase 4 of the MCU. Yeah, really. One Division, gotta love the hype. Falcon and the Winter Soldier, amazing character development. Loki, oh, just fantastic. Black Widow, love those character dynamics. Shang-Chi, oh, so good, just so good. Eternals, not gonna lie, overhated. Hawkeye, such a fun show. Spider-Man No Way Home, oh, God level tier MCU. Moon Knight, I'm actually still watching the show, I'm not actually finished yet, but um... From what I've watched, it's pretty good. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, oh. Great direction, those stylistic choices absolutely elevate the film. Miss Marvel, love those teen superhero stories. Thor Love and Thunder, I actually really liked it, I really love those types of films. She-Hulk, not a perfect show, but I still really like those simple situational comedies. Black Panther Wakanda Forever, I know it's not out yet, but I've seen the trailer and gave me goosebumps, I'm sure it will be great. While all of these might not be the same in quality, I still think that some are better than others, I still do like the direction they're going in. When coming off the biggest cinematic conclusion in the history of cinema, it's hard to know where to take the story and characters, but even still, I am liking this new direction with their projects. But then I stop to think, how do all of these movies and shows connect into one another? So far, all of these movies and shows have been telling pretty separate stories that don't exactly link up that well. Characters always used to cross over with one another through different projects, but now that there are so many different characters, it's kind of hard to do this. Apart from Wong. The poor guy can't catch a break. 
Some projects obviously connect more than others, but so far, it doesn't really feel like there's this overarching narrative that connects them all. Don't get me wrong, I still like the direction they're going in, and I know this is all leading to a 5th and 6th Avengers movie... eventually, but... how exactly? I'm sure it will all make sense eventually, and Phase 4 will be more of a setting up stage to set up these new stories and characters, and then in Phase 5 and 6 you get to actually explore them. Well if that's the case, why is it being rushed through so quickly? In the Infinity Saga, you had two, maybe three films come out a year. But now, we've got a lot more being released, very close together, and there's not much time in between. The Infinity Saga took over 10 years to reach its conclusion, but this saga looks like it's gonna take about half that time, so... Why is that? The reason is, most likely, Marvel don't have the time to wait 10 years to reach the finale with the actors that they have on contract. Sure. It would be nice if it was more properly paced, so we could actually have some breathing room and save it a moment and take it all in, but with Disney Plus now, Marvel can release less important stories that still connect, as well as their overall films. It seems like the shows are made to tell more secondary side stories, while the movies are produced to tell the main primary stories. But here's the thing, you kind of have needed to watch the shows to know what's happening in the movies. All those people that didn't watch WandaVision would have been extremely confused at the start of Multiverse of Madness. Loki is very important to the overarching story of the Multiverse Saga, but that's only a show. Let's say for example, What If... You get it? Because it's... The show, okay, never mind. But let's say for example, What If... Marvel didn't have any shows and suck purely to films, intending to stretch their entire saga out over the course of 10 years. It would look a lot different and probably more spread out over a longer period of time. WandaVision probably wouldn't exist. Falcon and the Winter Soldier probably would have just been spun into the fourth Captain America movie. Loki would definitely be its own movie. Hawkeye honestly probably should have been its own movie to begin with. Moon Knight would also be its own movie. Miss Marvel would have just been introduced at the start of the Marvels instead. And She-Hulk, honestly, I can't see being made outside of a show format, so let's just say it wouldn't have been made. Meaning that Phase 4 of the MCU would probably look something more like this if it was just purely movies. But Marvel are obviously not going to do this because they need to make this content while they still have these actors. Comic book characters don't really age, you can use the same character for 50 years and in comic book time they would have hardly aged a bit. In the real world, you can't do that. Eventually, all of these actors' contracts will expire and they'll have to leave the MCU. Meaning that every time this happens, it will leave this gaping hole in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We've already seen this happen to three of the original Avengers, being Iron Man, Captain America and Black Widow, who all left at the end of Endgame. And I know the solution here is you bring in another character and then they take on their legacy, which is something that we've already seen happen. Sam Wilson is taking on the mantle as Captain America, Yelena will carry on the legacy of Black Widow, and Ironheart, an upcoming character in Black Panther, will take over the role of Tony Stark's Iron Man. Even characters like Hulk and Hawkeye, who haven't even left the MCU yet, still have legacy characters that are there when it's their time to retire. Now, for the moment, this works fine. However, I can only see this happening once for each character, if that, because eventually, all of these iconic characters are going to retire from the MCU, whether we like it or not, and then I think Marvel might be in a bit of trouble. We know that there's a lot of MCU actors whose contracts are nearly up. I mean, Tom Holland says he doesn't really want to play the role of Spider-Man past the age of 30. But that's still ages away, right? I mean, what, Tom Holland's only, like, 21? Oh. These iconic heroes is what the MCU is built on. Without them, can the MCU even continue once all of these characters leave? So then, what can the MCU do to ensure that this does not happen? Well, in my mind, there's about three approaches they can take. The first thing, and it's what they're already doing at the moment, but bringing in another character so they can take on another character's iconic legacy. As I said, this works at the moment for specific characters, but eventually, if you're going to do this again and again, and just give another character the same power set and personality, 
It's just going to seem lazy, and you could probably only get away with doing this once. The second is, you could recast, so while the character is going to be untouched, the actor would get replaced. This approach is not uncommon in superhero movies, we've seen this happen time and time again, where a bunch of different actors will all play the same iconic role at a different period in time. We've even seen this happen in the MCU, where the Incredible Hulk was recast before the Avengers. You could also recast by bringing in another variant of that character from a different universe played by a different actor. The time to do this would probably be by Phase 6 with Secret Wars, but who knows if they're going to go down that path. And the third is pretty dark, but you just kill the character off entirely and their legacy dies with them. My only fear here is that Marvel keep rushing out all of these projects really fast and close together, that eventually, they're just going to run out of ideas. Once they've used all of these iconic heroes, they're kind of in a tough situation. I can see a lot of MCU actors retiring by the end of Phase 6, leaving their character behind. Now, I'm not saying that other heroes can't make it big, because that's absolutely not the case. People laughed when Marvel announced they were going to be starting their cinematic universe with Iron Man, and look at him now, he's as big a superhero as Batman or Superman. But Peter Parker, Stephen Strange, Bruce Banner, Nick Fury are characters you can only use once. The character of Spider-Man may live on in the MCU for many years to come, but Peter Parker will only be temporary. Let's just hope that they use these characters to their full potential before it's their time to leave the MCU. While these are the big recognisable names, there are still new, exciting, fresh characters that have just entered the MCU, which do have the potential to be just as big and iconic, which is really exciting. One day, the MCU will end, and while that might not happen anytime soon, the reality is, it's going to happen eventually. But does that mean we'll never see any more Marvel superheroes on the big screen again? No, of course not. If it's still doing really well and is popular amongst fans, it will most likely be rebooted with different stories, actors, new directors, visions, and ideas. And honestly, I would rather that than them bring back old characters that really shouldn't be touched again. And now, for the biggest news of the night. As of today, we have just secured the rights to the character of Spider-Man. Which also means we have the rights to all of Spider-Man's villains. Oh no. Alright, let's just have a look at some of the villains we've got lined up. So we have Human Fly, White Rabbit, Kangaroo, Big Wheel, and at the face of it all, the one, the only... There is no coming back from this. But what are your thoughts? Do you think this will affect the future of the MCU? Comment your thoughts down below. And that's all for today's video, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching and I will see you next Friday.